This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at voltaic cells. A voltaic cell, which is also known as a galvanic cell, uses a spontaneous redox reaction to generate electrical energy. Here on the left, we can see an image of a voltaic cell. This voltaic cell is composed of two half cells, a salt bridge, and an external circuit, which contains a voltmeter. Here we can see a close-up of the two half cells. On the left we have a zinc half cell and on the right we have a copper half cell. The zinc half cell is composed of a zinc electrode in a solution of zinc ions. The copper half cell is composed of a copper electrode in a solution of copper ions. The two half cells are joined by a salt bridge. The salt bridge is composed of a piece of filter paper soaked in aqueous potassium nitrate. Here we have a diagram of the voltaic cell that we saw in the previous slide. On the left we have a zinc half cell and on the right we have a copper half cell. The zinc half cell is composed of a zinc electrode in a solution of zinc ions. And the copper half cell is composed of a copper electrode in a solution of copper ions. The two half cells are connected by a salt bridge and an external circuit. The zinc half cell is called the anode and the copper half cell is called the cathode. In a voltaic cell, the anode is negative and the cathode is positive. At the anode, the zinc atoms that make up the zinc electrode undergo oxidation. The electrons lost by the zinc electrode travel in the external circuit to the copper electrode. So the electron flow is from anode to cathode. At the cathode, the copper ions in solution gain electrons they undergo reduction to form copper atoms. So to summarize, the zinc electrode undergoes oxidation. The electrons flow in the external circuit to the cathode. At the cathode, copper ions undergo reduction. In addition to the movement of electrons in the external circuit, we also have movement of ions in the salt bridge, which we'll look at in more detail later on. Next, we'll look at how to use the activity series to determine which will be the anode and which will be the cathode in a voltaic cell. So in this voltaic cell, the zinc half cell is the anode and the copper half cell is the cathode. If we look at the activity series, we can see that zinc is higher up in the series than copper. The metal higher up in the activity series will be the anode, which in this voltaic cell is zinc. And the metal lower down in the activity series will be the cathode, which in this example is copper. So next we'll have a closer look at the reactions occurring at the anode and cathode. So at the anode, the zinc metal undergoes oxidation. And here we can see the half equation. The zinc metal undergoes oxidation to form aqueous zinc ions. This causes a buildup of positive charge at the anode. The electrons then flow in the wire to the cathode. The mass of the zinc electrode decreases. This is because the zinc metal is undergoing oxidation. And next we have the cathode. So the electrons flow to the cathode from the anode. At the cathode, the copper ions undergo reduction. And here we can see the half equation. The aqueous copper ions gain electrons to form solid copper metal. This causes a buildup of negative charge at the cathode. The reduction of the aqueous copper ions also causes the mass of the copper electrode to increase. So to summarize, at the anode we have zinc metal undergoing oxidation. At the cathode we have copper ions undergoing reduction. And here we have the overall equation for the reaction. If we assign oxidation states, we can see that the zinc metal is being oxidized and the copper ions are being reduced. Next, we look at a shorthand notation for describing the components of a voltaic cell. Using this notation, the anode is written on the left and the cathode on the right. A solid vertical line represents a phase boundary. For example, between the solid zinc and the aqueous zinc ions. A double vertical line represents the salt bridge. Next, we look at the function of the salt bridge. The salt bridge allows movement of ions between half cells, which balances the charge and completes the circuit. Earlier in the video we saw that the anode has a buildup of positive charge and the cathode a buildup of negative charge. Ions flowing from the salt bridge help keep both half cells electrically neutral. In this example the salt bridge contains aqueous potassium nitrate. 
the aqueous potassium nitrate dissociates into positive potassium ions and negative nitrate ions. The negative ions or anions migrate to the anode. This neutralizes the positive charge that builds up in the anode. The positive ions or cations migrate to the cathode, where they neutralize the negative charge that builds up at the cathode. So let's end the video with a summary. In a voltaic cell, oxidation occurs at the anode, which is the negative electrode, and reduction occurs at the cathode, which is the positive electrode. The metal higher up in the activity series is oxidized, therefore it will be the anode. In a voltaic cell, the electric current is conducted in two ways. They are ion flow in the salt bridge and electron flow in the wires of the external circuit. And in the salt bridge, anions migrate to the anode and cations migrate to the cathode. This keeps both half cells electrically neutral and completes the circuit.